Mobile and commerce, two hot topics, just like mobile and big data and cloud. But what's particularly interesting about mobile and commerce is that uh, customers today have to have a shared vision for how to do commerce in a mobile first world. So what does that mean? Well, in the simplest way to think about this is that if you're going to embrace the mobile world and you're going to do it in a way that involves being smarter about commerce, you have to start by reimagining the client experience. And so it starts by thinking about how can you work with your entire company to re-architect the interaction experience you have with your clients, how you move them through the purchase funnel, across the marketing tactics, through loyalty tactics, through other things involving social media, to eventually drive those customers to purchase in a mobile way. And we know that this is happening. We know that, for example, on Cyber Monday, mobile sales were up 96%. We know that on average, people are expecting that mobile transactions will represent 25% of all commerce transactions in the next few years. The question is, how do you get there? And part of the way you get there is you have to think about your buy, market, sell, service model in a way that embraces mobile first. And you have to think about when you are marketing to your customers, how does that embrace mobile? How will your mobile application include those types of features that will drive loyalty or uh, location-specific couponing, things like what Visa has done with the Gap, one of our customers, where they're actually using location data to offer Gap clients real-time coupons to come in and purchase in the store if they happen to be down a couple storefronts down in the mall. That type of mobile commerce activity is the type of thing you can do to drive top-line results. So as you think about the buy, market, sell, service model that we use to think about commerce, and you put a mobile lens on that, how you do the marketing is going to be transformed, how you do the selling, and how you can provide ratings and other experience factors through social media that will encourage a customer to actually purchase will change. How you actually process the payment and the purchasing may change. You may be leveraging things like near-field communications like Starbucks does, right, for a, to plug into a payment network. And then just as importantly, how do you drive loyalty as part of the ongoing service relationship you have with a customer to make sure that your mobile commerce transaction re results in a loyal customer, not just a one-time transaction. So those are some of the things you need to think about as you think about mobile and commerce coming together. But the real differentiator for most customers who are embracing mobile commerce is around the analytics. And the key is you can do a whole range of analytics about the user experience of your application. So if you think about every time you use a mobile application, it's the equivalent of walking into a retail store. In the same way that when you walk in a store and there's a science around how you walk through the store and there's a science as to why grocery stores put milk in the back, well, you need to have that same degree of science around your mobile application. So when you create a mobile application for your customers, you need to use something like IBM's Tea Leaf Analytics product that lets you understand how customers go through the application. Where are they most likely to buy? Where do they quit the application or get frustrated? We can provide all those analytics about the individual user experience to you as the, as the company so you can provide a great experience. And that's what's going to be the real differentiator down the road for mobile commerce is that type of user analytics. So one of the questions we always get is, what does it really mean for a company to be mobile first? How do they really embrace the mobile first revolution, become a mobile first enterprise? And I usually will share with a customer three key things that they have to think about to really embrace mobile. Number one, it starts by having a view that says, we need to have a mobile strategy for the company as a whole. This isn't an IT initiative, it's not a CMO initiative. It has to be jointly led by the CMO and the CIO to drive a mobile strategy across the company. And the reason for that is that the second key to success is reimagining the client experience. So you can't just take your website or your typical customer service experience and port that to mobile phones. It doesn't work. You're not going to be successful because you're not embracing all the cool, unique features of mobile. What you need to do instead is you need to think about how to reimagine your customer interactions in a mobile-first world. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means you need to think about the fact that somebody has their phone 24-7. It's always within arm's reach. It means you need to think about the fact that on that phone, you could pull in other information from their social network. You need to think about the fact that you can pull in big data sources like GPS and use that type of insight to drive a different experience for the customer 
rather than having them input their zip code of where they currently are today. That's a simple one. So there's lots of things that are unique to the mobile form factor that you need to think about as you reimagine the customer experience. And then once you've done that, the third key to success around mobile first is designing for a mobile first world. So designing those experiences to incorporate all those features that are unique to the mobile world. So what's a good example of how to do that? ING Direct's a great example in Canada of a bank that has done this. If you look at their application, and not only does mobile banking, which is great and cool, they've done an incredible job of incorporating social feeds of YouTube feeds and Facebook, not just logging in with your Facebook account, but actually interaction between your bank account and Facebook. And some of the cool features they have about how you can make a small sacrifice, right, and actually save a little bit of money and tweet that out or post that out on Facebook if you desire to do so. So that's a great example of how you can leverage that. Another example in Canada is shop.ca, where they're really thinking about how they need to create you know, a purchase experience around shop.canada, shop.ca, that is different than the web experience, right? Because if you have 15 million things in your web catalog, you have to translate a process differently to show that on a mobile phone than you would on the website. So two great examples of Canada, in Canada, who are embracing this mobile-first thinking, redesigning how they approach the customer experience, and therefore coming up with a very different and unique mobile experience for their customers in a mobile-first world. So one of the frequent topics we get when we talk about commerce and mobile is the shared vision that needs to be created for the CIO and the CMO. And you know, there's a lot of discussion right now about how they need to work together. And the question is, why has that become so important now compared to three or four years ago? Why didn't that come up in the web era or any other time in our history? And I think what's unique about mobile and commerce that creates a need for the CMO and the CIO to work together is two or three really important things. Number one, if you think about being successful on mobile, you have to reimagine the customer experience. So that obviously starts with the CMO or the Chief Transformation Officer. But in order to do that, it's going to require huge process changes. If you're going to change your customer service, if you're going to change the way your customers interact with your company through mobile, you're going to have to change the, comp the processes inside your company. Well, nobody can change processes without changing their IT systems. You can't change how people purchase if your IT systems don't support it. So that's a simple example of what's required. The second thing that's unique about mobile that's causing the CMO and the CIO to have to work together even more, t more tightly is the fact that it requires integration of things like social and big data. Things that traditionally may have been the domain of the IT department, but now are the real backbone of loyalty programs and customer marketing and how we use analytics, which typically had been an IT discussion, how we use customer analytics to drive segmentation in the marketing world, and how that segmentation needs to change to, can lead to changes in pricing strategies and loyalty strategies on the fly using some of IBM's tools. So the intersection of the CMO and the CIO is more important than ever. Add to that the fact that the mobile world moves so much more quickly. I mean, on average, people release updates to mobile apps every four to six weeks not every six months. And all of a sudden the CIO has to be ready to embrace that. So you can't be successful as a CMO on mobile if you don't have a great CIO partner. And the CIO can't be successful in the new mobile world if he or she is not tightly linked with the CMO. So that partnership is, is one of the key differentiators we see of where customers are successful in mobile. It's because of a shared vision that's set by the CMO and the CIO together.